So uh, let's move on to uh, what is called uh, inner products. Okay, so let's see if something is required in between, we'll go back and try to understand that. But otherwise, um, we will try to understand what is an inner product. Okay, so this is something, uh, it's an extension of something that you have already studied, right? How, I think you have studied this in your uh, linear algebra, inner product. Yes? Okay, so what is the use of inner product? Any use? Hmm? Or is it useless? Have you ever used inner product in your other subjects other than linear algebra? Other than math, by the way. Huh? At least one, at least one branch. Then we should suggest removing linear algebra and math, everything, right, from this syllabus. If you have not used any of those. So any, any, okay, let me start with electrical because I, yeah. So any, any courses where uh, you have looked at inner products? Okay, are there any electrical engineering students? Please raise your hand. It's okay, you can raise your hand, not like, Okay, good. So, yeah, you guys should answer. Never heard of inner product or never used inner product in your uh, electrical engineering curriculum? What about computer science? What about mechanical? Computer science uh, may not be, may not have used, I don't know. Have you used? Huh? Mechanical, I'm sure you should have used somewhere. Okay, forget it. So what is the use of inner product? What does it give us? If I say the inner product of two vectors is very high, what does it mean? Huh? Yes? What does it mean? Huh? Similar. Similar. Uh, will it give us a similarity notion? You can think of inner products as dot product, right? So you're saying dot product is very high. When can it happen? For example, you have these two vectors. Yes, inner product will be very high. What about, uh, for example, this vector? Almost, let's say, 89.999 degree. What is the inner product of the, or dot product of these two? Very low, but it depends on the length of these two vectors, right? Length could be 100 billion and 100 billion. Then? Inner product is not, uh, the dot product is not low, right? It will give some very high dot products, right? So inner product or dot product doesn't give you similarity in that sense. The number, the absolute value will not give similarity. So when will it give similarity? Huh? See, the length should not be exorbitantly high, right? So you should standardize length. In other words, you should normalize length, unit vectors, right? Then talk about dot products, then it makes sense, right? So if the dot product is high, that means it's aligned, otherwise it's not, right? But not for any arbitrary vector, okay? Now, let's look at how you uh, define inner uh, dot product, right? So uh, if you have two vectors, let's say x1, x2, and you have another vector y1, y2, this is the dot product, do you agree? Right? So I'll write all the vectors as column, okay, from now onwards. Uh, every vector I can think of, I'll think of it as a column vector, not the row vector. So what happens to this? Suppose this is, I call the vector as x. This is x transpose y, right? Do you agree? So this will give me an in, uh, dot product because actually dot product, right? So now what are the properties of dot products? Let's look at, uh, the, let's list some of the, at least quickly go through that and then I'll stop. I think it's almost, we have only two minutes. So this is linear in x, do you agree? It's linear in y, right? If I take x transpose x, it's always non-negative. It's equal to zero if and only if x equal to zero, right? Equality if and only if x equal to zero. What else I can say? x transpose y is same as y transpose x. Do you agree? It's the same thing, it commutes. So these are the properties, right? Now, uh, if I have to write a book, of course, I can write a book on uh, dot products, right? Uh, then um, let's say you, you talk about uh, some other kind of uh, dot products, right? Then I have to write another book and so on. Instead, what I can do is I can generalize this or abstract it out, right? Any 
So what is it that you are doing? That product means you are taking two vectors and you are giving me a number, right? So it's a function, right? It's a map. It's mapping two vectors to a number, right? So what are the properties? These are the properties, right? Uh, it's linear in the first element, linear in the second element. F of x comma x is always non-negative, equal to zero if and only if x equal to zero, right? And f of x y is same as f of y x, right? This kind of a function. Now any function that satisfies these properties is like almost think of it as a inner product, right? So and we will move from there from the next class onwards. Okay, few more classes will kind of wind up uh, linear algebra. Maybe we'll look at one or two problems in data analysis related to linear algebra, and we'll move on to uh, optimization, which is like the most important part of uh, uh, data analysis. Okay, yeah, thanks.